I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and I'm just sharing the exciting news that Fitbit finally enabled the pulse oximeter on their devices. And I've been speculating about this for years now. People have been um, kind of noticing that Fitbits have a pulse oximeter included on many of their smartwatches, but you can't actually access the data in the app. And it wasn't clear exactly what they were using it for uh, before, and now finally it is. So I had speculated that this was probably part of their goal of eventually tracking sleep apnea and warning you about sleep apnea, where you stop breathing briefly while you're sleeping. Um, and I also suspect that they've been using the data from the, the uh, pulse oximeter to build their sleep score, which is really an excellent feature in uh, Fitbit. So they finally have, as of uh, January 2020 enabled that device and they've actually started to show you some of the data from that pulse oximeter uh, in the app. And um, I was right about several things here. One is that they're using it for sleep tracking. Um, it goes into part of your restoration score and your Fitbit premium sleep score. And um, also that they do appear to be using it to work towards uh, sleep apnea. So they actually said that they're looking for FDA approval uh, to, to tell you if you have that condition and to warn you about that condition. They don't have that yet. So at the moment, this isn't supposed to be used for medical purposes, uh, but I think that's definitely what they're building towards. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the app. Um, firstly, if you're not seeing this uh, yet in your app, you may have to update the firmware on your device. And if there is an update available, you'll see a little uh, balloon at the top of your Fitbit uh, app and you just have to sync and update and um, just make sure you have the most recent version of the firmware on the tracker. I had to do that for my Versa um, and my charge before I was able to actually access the sleep data uh, with the pulse oximeter. So now I'm gonna go into sleep, um, ignore today's sleep and yesterday's. Uh, it's not put together two different chunks. I kind of do a biphasic type of sleep. Um, so I have to go in and manually edit those. But let's take a look at Wednesday, which is a pretty pretty accurate uh, chunk of sleep, I think. Uh, six hours and 33 minutes. I'm gonna go in here, a 72 sleep score, which is fair. Um, now I'm gonna go into the restoration metric at the bottom, which is basically measuring how um, restorative the sleep is, how rested you feel at the end of your sleep. So let's take a look in here. Um, sleeping heart rate, so that's something that they've shown for a while. Restlessness, and then this is the new one. If I scroll down to the bottom, you get estimated oxygen variation. And there's a little um, kind of explanation of this, how oxygen saturation fluctuates. Um, high variations can be linked to breathing issues. Again, they're not gonna come out and say sleep apnea because they don't have approval for that yet. Um, but you can look and see, and, and you know, a couple things to note here. They're not giving you a percentage value for the sensor. Um, that's usually how pulse oximeters measure is a percentage of blood oxygen. Um, so anything I think below about 92% is considered to be an issue. Anything 92% to 100% is fine. So what they're showing you is just the variation <clears throat> over time in your value. And again, you know, this is helpful in that it would show you if you have high variation, then that would mean that you might be um, stopping breathing or you might have some kind of other oxygen challenge while you're sleeping. I'm looking at my values pretty much consistently every night. Um, I'm in that low range. It does vary throughout the night. So you can see I get very low variation and that seems to correspond to a time probably when I'm in a deeper sleep. Um, some nights, if I look at uh, you know one night that doesn't have full data, but I'll go ahead and take a look uh, at one of these other nights. You can see the variation changes. Sometimes it's very flat, sometimes it's very bumpy, but overall I'm in that low uh, range. So, you know, if you were in the high range and you started to see the line here spiking up into that high level and going into the orange color, then that would indicate that maybe you are having some kind of breathing challenge. And again, this is not uh, something that's medical yet, but it would be something to pot uh, potentially talk to your doctor about. So if you do this, and you find that you're getting high variation in your oxygen level consistently night after night, um, you know, maybe talk to your doctors, uh, raise the question of whether uh, you could have sleep apnea and they would probably do a more comprehensive sleep study. Uh, now what's in the future for this? Uh, my guess is that Fitbit will eventually get uh, clearance to start to use this for actually measuring and tracking sleep apnea. Um, they're in the process, I think, right now with the FDA 
with COVID-19, that obviously changes things a bit, but also with their acquisition with Google, they have a lot more uh, people and and money to put towards this. So my guess is they will eventually get clearance and we'll start to see an actual diagnostic in here for sleep apnea, and maybe they'll start to show the percentages or other metrics using the pulse oximeter. Very exciting after years of of, uh, speculation, it's finally clear that they're actually using this for sleep and you can actually get some data out of it. If you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps.